concerns for its own food security. Uh, this is very bad news for the developing world because basically what it means is that uh, the, uh, the farmers of the uh, developing nations are not protected uh, with, uh, with trade agreements uh, with behemoths like uh, China. So uh, once again, this could be a, uh, an opportunity for us to um, explore that uh, in, um, in, in a future show. Um, on other news, uh, just a couple of other things. Um, wanted to uh, wanted to make our listeners aware that uh, again uh, in the category of uh, this is how things work um, Merrill Lynch uh, holds literally billions of dollars in bad loans um, is a gentleman out there by the name of John P. Graylin who made a, a fortune on buying um, uh, undervalued securities in what he calls a vulture fund well, on Monday, uh, Mr. Grayland's private investment company, Lone, Lone Star Funds, agreed to pay $6.2 billion for, um, for Merrill Lynch's uh, multi-billion dollar um, distressed loan portfolios. Um, the, uh, the interesting angle on this story is that Merrill Lynch lent Mr. Grayland the money to do this. Again, uh, I wish I knew how the world works because I'd like a piece of that action too. Um, it's kind of like being uh, the chairman and CEO at Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and uh, you know, getting paid twenty million dollar compensation packages for basically losing eighty percent of the share value of your companies. Um, we spoke about the uh, the WTO um, uh, a second ago, and uh, I wanted to offer our listeners. Actually, a uh, an opportunity. I've never done this before. Usually, I I'll pick the topic and uh, and then I'll go and hunt for the guests. And if you do want to ask any questions or comments, you can uh, email us at dj at kzyx dot org. That's dj at kzyx dot org. If you want to email questions to us live on the show, and 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 we're going to do a little vote here as well. Which 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 subject would you like to hear more about? Uh, one is going. Subject number one will be the WTO talks and what it means for the developing world. And the, uh, the subject number two will be Exxon Records um, profits. On the uh, WTO t- uh, collapse, um, I'm thinking about having uh, Deborah James. Uh, she's director of the uh, international programs at the Center of Economic and uh, Policy Research. And I'm thinking uh, about in the second half of that hour having a uh, Walden Bellow, who's a senior analyst at the Bangkok-based Research and Advocacy Institute, uh, focus on Global South, and he's a professor at at uh, the University of the Philippines. Um, the, the issue here is that uh, the failure of the WTO to come up with trade agreements has had a huge negative impact for uh, farmers and workers in the developing nations. The tariff cuts, uh, cuts demanded by China uh, will cause massive job loss uh, in developing countries, and uh, they will lose their ability to uh, protect their farmers uh, from what's called dumping. Uh, the dumping of uh, cheap products, uh, and will further um, further uh, threaten uh, their very subsistence uh, a way of uh, of life. Uh, issue uh, the second issue will be on the uh, that you can vote on is the uh, Exxon Records uh, profits. Um, uh, yesterday, Exxon reported a profit of uh, 10.7 billion dollars, or 36.13 billion for the year. Uh, their company's earnings amounted to a uh, buck seventy-one per share, or uh, or an increase of twenty-seven percent uh, for the quarter. This is the largest annual reported income for any company in U.S. history. Uh, so, if you'd like to hear about Exxon Records profits, and and my my issue with Exxon is that they're not contrary to what they're saying. And I'm actually I have a forensic accountant investigating this right now. Contrary to what they're saying, they're not uh, making huge investments in alternative energy or even in significant exploration. I am wagering that Exxon will use its re- record profits to buy back the stock of its own company. In other words, if their executives are compensated with stock option packages and if they're using these profits to buy back stock, in other words, take stock out, then there's less stock and the price of the stock will go up. Hence, their executives will get even more money. 
Uh, it's kind of a nifty little trick, and there's uh, there's some evidence to suggest that uh, that Exxon, Conoco, and Chevron are all embarking or about to embark on huge st- stock buyback programs. Um, our our my proposed guest on the Exxon bailout uh, would be uh, T- uh, Tyson Slocum, uh, who is the director of the Citizen Energy Program, a bureaucratic uh, who has suggested that a bureaucratic loophole has allowed 24 oil companies in the United States and in the world to skip out on more than $1.3 billion in royalties for the privilege of extracting oil and natural gas out of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but this uh, $1.3 billion uh, in royalties is, uh, is dwarfed, and it pales in comparison to the roughly $60 billion that Americans stand to lose in royalty payments over the lifetime of these uh, leases in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I'd like to have... Uh, I love to have Tyson Slocum on the show as well. So option number one, door number one, WTO talks and what it means for uh, the loss of American prestige and world trade talks and what it means for uh, the devastating effect that it will have on uh, on the uh, farmers uh, in developing nations. And door number two will be uh, the uh, Re- Exxon's record profits, how they're using that those profits to buy back stock. And we'll also talk about the loophole that uh, that allows uh, up to 60 billion in revenues uh, to escape from uh, drilling in the oil in the Gulf of Mexico. All right, so we will have as our first guest Bruce Marks, and uh, Bruce Marks, Whoa. Bruce Marks. Um, let me read the little intro to Bruce Marks. Last week, thousands of people lined up in Washington D.C to have their Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America help them restructure their mortgages in the group's Save the Dream event. The group, which has long criticized the practices of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, now charges that Fannie and Freddie are continuing, quote, predatory lending practices, end of quote, including the purchase of interest-only and other problematic loans. Mr. Marks is the CEO of the Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America. He said earlier this week, quote, The Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac bailouts will provide virtually no benefit to at-risk homeowners due to the restrictive underwriting and delayed implementation resulting in millions of homeowners losing their homes based on false promises. The beneficiaries of the act will be Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, whose uh, implicit guarantee of uh, 25 to 30 billion in the act will be become unlimited and may cost taxpayers more than 800 billion or more. I'm going to get back to that point in a second. Uh, Continuing with about Mr. Marks, uh, this bill rewards Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac for their past failures and supports them in their continuing in these predatory practices. Congress and and the Bush administration have never asked two fundamental questions. One, when will HUD be able to implement the new Hope for America program Hope for Homeowners program, and two, are Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae uh, continuing the lending practices that got uh, got us into this trouble in the first place? Mr. Marks was voted Bostonian of the Year last year uh, by the Boston Globe. Mr. Marks, welcome to our show. It it is great to be on, and it's great to hear all of your analysis. Right on point. (laughs) That's one of my favorite expressions, (laughs) on point. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about that eight hundred billion 